Switching the way our intro works, where instead of me putting it in like during the editing process, I have like a button I can press where it goes and plays. Mm. Because I've been listening to, to Tate's podcast lately on Rumble, which, okay. oh, by the way, hilarious. They're actually <laughs> very funny. How often are they doing the? They're doing it a lot more now. Now they're doing it like sometimes once a week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, well, twice it, a it's week. like fifty minutes to an hour. I was hour. gonna say it used to be like a whole event. Like, he, they would only do it, like, once every six months. They were in and out of jail. Yeah. But they he's got this intro where it plays, and it's, like, he presses the button, and it starts playing, and it's, like, it show, it goes to a whole graphic thing, and it's, like, Mr. Producer, you make the best show. And it's, like, this whole thing. But then it'll stop, and then there's, like, this three-second long, like, waiting time before it comes back into the episode. And then he'll, like, just be talking or whatever, and then he'll press it again, and then he'll just, he, one episode, he pressed it, like, ten times, and it just... Made you watch it, so he was letting his nuts hang. He was he was trolling everybody. But anyways, I think that would be something that would be good for this show is if I could press a button and then it rolls in and then fades into us without having to edit it because I think it would, I think it would seem more organic. If if we just watch the intro that just went on, like we would watch it because it would take five seconds, but then it would start where we could start talking while it's happening, mm. but we would hear it in the headphones too. Maybe it could be like a pig head rotating with like a monkey noise. Like, oh, oh, ah, ah, ah. and yeah. then we go the buggy boys experience something like that yeah. something like that i don't know not yeah. something like that not exactly like that but yeah i can probably oh, figure oh, something out around oh, there. Oh, oh, ah, ah, ah. yeah <laughs> i wonder if i have anything like that's already like that in my files uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah but okay wait, no let's start our intro really quick hang on All right. Yep. Oh my god, I'm ready to take on the world. I know. I wonder how flagged how quickly I'm gonna get flagged on that one. <laughs> <Instant>. <laughs> Zero views on the episode after that one. All right, now that we're actually in here getting down to business. First of all, thank you for being so flexible with your schedule this week. It's no, been it's really crazy. Yeah, well, I just know when a big opportunity like that shows up for you. <laughs> That I just try my best to accommodate you as much as I can. Well, this is the biggest thing that's happened in my whole life. <laughs> it, you're literally, your entire existence has led up to that moment. Yeah. And it was so awesome for you, I had to let you live it. I made my knees weak. <laughs> no. Sexy boy. <laughs> yeah, but things will be a lot more back to normal in a, once, once, once you're done training. Yeah, it's going to be a week long of getting paid dog crap. And, Freaking crap. and just working like a regular job, hours, training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that, that job is, act- oh, hang on. Before we talk Before about we work. Before we talk about work. So the, here's the question is you go okay. and you ask a girl, you go, would you rather spend uh, an undisclosed amount of time in the forest with a random man or a bear? And then the whole thing is that, like, most women are going to say the bear. Yeah. Like, a hundred per- almost 100% of the time. Like, 90% of the time. I thought it was going to be a worse question. I, th- I kind of agree with them. Yeah, but... Really? Well, dude, what's the man going to do? Try to help them or hurt them. I don't think they're going to help them. I don't think I've met many men in my life who would help. If they were just stranded... But you kind of need each other. What do you need her for? If you're trying to get out? Gathering. No, I think it's like survival. The question is like you have to sit there and uh, survive in the woods. How many good dudes have you met? I, 
look, I'm I meet a lot more myself. bad dudes and good dudes. I'm just speaking for myself here, but if I was trapped in the forest with a random woman and we had to use each other to survive, I wouldn't immediately just go to her. <laughs> I agree. I wouldn't either. But I'm saying, I would. Listen, we know some big bands of the world. I don't th- think he's doing anything nice. And that's true. He's also not going to be quite helpful. Exactly, and a lot of dudes are losers. Like, like they they want to give up right away. Well, I'm actually glad that you have this input be- or this uh, view because it makes it a lot more interesting. Because that was the thing is I didn't know about the question really. I heard the same thing about like that you heard where it was like I knew it was in the air, but mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was exactly. Coworker explained it to me, and then he goes around to because we work with only girls. It's like it's very rare that me all and him are even together. Old girls. <laughs> well, in this case, they were all my age, but. They're almost 30? Yeah, gross. But uh, he went around and asked all of them, it was like each question individually, and they all, except for one, said uh, bear. One said man. I mean, why? uh, It depends on the bear, too, because if it was a grizzly bear, you're dead. Any bear, you're dead if you're a girl. Well, I'm not saying I'm going to beat up a bear, but some bears are pussies and they just run away. Like they want to eat fruit somewhere. Like black bears. Yeah, I think I think the point of the question is the same reason that the girls were answering bear, and it's kind of just a hot-button thing, where it's like, if you say bear, you're implying that a bear is less dangerous than a man. But if it's a whole forest, you don't have to sit next to the bear. No, no. It's like, you can just leave, if he will let you leave. Yeah, let's say, I mean, let's like, just why, spawn what, in right next to each other. Like, I, I, that's how I thought, but yeah. just leave the bear. <laughs> like, yeah. like, if it's a black bear, he probably doesn't want anything to do with you. But you think if it's a man and a woman who spawn in together, like, it's going to be... Honestly, dude, how many guys have I you I think met? I would rather play the nature game than the social game. Because I would always be like, this bitch is going to stab me in my back for some reason and eat me. What if she's hungry? I get her something. What if there's nothing to... Cur- I don't know. I'll kill her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I I'm saying. I can see why she wouldn't want that. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too, is, like, I, I if if there's no food and you have to that's eat a saying. person to survive, I feel like, what is the point of doing that? Because how... if you Once you eat the person and then you're out of people, is it the point that you're sp- hoping to get rescued in between that period of time? or like? Exactly. That's also what I'm trying to figure out. Is it just survive as long as possible? See, we're both two people who don't know the real source of the question, so I don't know... <laughs> Like, we could just kind of spitball, but I don't know. Yeah, so let's see here. If we're in a desert, then I would... Desert would be the probably worst case scenario. Rainforest might be worst case scenario, but at least that is food. (laughs) I just thought about all the bugs in a rainforest, dude. I fucking hate bugs, Yeah, bugs are the problem. Bugs are definitely the problem. Dude, I I don't know. What what do you think it is about me where I hate bugs? Any bugs. Even, like, butterflies I don't like. Creepy crawlies. Creepy crawlies. You don't like the creepy crawlies. I think, honestly, but it comes just, down to, like, the touchy-feely part of it. Maybe. But I don't like it when they get next to me, either. Like, I had you don't a like direct- the way they feel. They You don't like the way they feel on you. I also don't like the way they interact with the third dimension. It's like they don't act like mammals. I, you know, Like, they just are programmed to do things. They're like drones. I almost. know. I love watching ants because I have a brick patio. Mm-hmm. So if you watch the ants, like, they'll just go to the crack of the brick and then they'll like, burr, 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 burr. and then sometimes they'll crawl up and grab something. It's very fun. And the crazy thing is, like, they're all working together yeah. on one goal. Which is why China's winning. Time. Which is why China's winning. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. But it's, that's why I don't like them. I don't trust them because they don't have thought or feelings or even like even animals that don't have thoughts or feelings like they can weigh out rational situations like food here me go yeah like bugs don't even really have that sometimes it's like and now there's a web that's in like a perfect you know what i mean yeah which is cool though it's insane but i don't like it it's like get away from me do it over there go be bug. bug. Get away from me, man. I don't like you. You're it looks too like small. I get the feeling that they're, like, they're trying to go up my butt, too. <laughs> All bugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're trying to shimmy their... Like, find somewhere warm. Yeah, they could... I, hey, oh, could you imagine you wake up to a millipede trying to get up your butt? <laughs> no. I mean, millipedes are at least bigger. Like, quick, small bugs. Like, how am I going to stop a little, like... 
<laughs> exactly. I have to just like gas through my pants. Anyway, so would you rather be in the forest with a bug or a bear? I was just thinking a bug or a bear. Uh, <laughs> definitely a bear. But like I said, I don't know. I don't know why the bear would feel the need to instantly attack you if you spawned in. Because obviously, if the scenario, if the question is, who are you gonna bear? fight? Who are you gonna fight or whatever? A man or a bear? Even if you're a woman, you, you have a better shot against a man. A woman's obviously. gonna say man because men, she, they, they instantly think men. Because uh, women simultaneously think men are weak and also <laughs> they're weaker, which they're weak. makes them weak victims. <laughs> weaker victims. Yeah, no, well, that's, I get what the question is, like, why they're answering bear, because they want to present a social issue where yeah, it's, like, it's, men are... Yeah, it's, like, speaking how scared they are of men. Right, But exactly. also, they want to be raped by men. Well, dude, couldn't have bet... This is going to sound so harsh and so crass, and I don't mean to come across as so, uh... But it's true. Like, evil-sounding, but I'm not trying to make the point of this. I, th- the point is much broader. A lot of women... The best thing that could ever happen to them is that they have a token that they could pull out of their pocket and throw on the table and say, listen to me cry for the next 10 million years. Like, I'm not, (laughs) that sounds so bad. But it's true. It sounds so bad. And I don't mean it like in specific to the This is what my girlfriend would say in response to that. You wish you had a mute and deaf girlfriend. You just wanted to sit there. You just wanted to sit there and be mute. No, that's not what I want. And then I go, Will you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> Will no, you ever just shut the fuck just, up? <laughs> I think that, like, I'm not speaking about all women here, dude. I'm just, just saying. Just 99.99. There's, there's a lot of chicks out there who are constantly looking for something to complain about to you. And even though you're not even the right person to be talked to about that. I, I know. I hate I hate complaining, too. I, I'm like. I, I Dude, all we do is complain on this podcast. <laughs> I know, but it's not. It's, it's not to our same. huge audience yeah, of, of pigs who love us and share and we like can these do videos. It. You guys, not so much. I c- we can't even get twenty likes, dude, on a YouTube video. What are you guys doing? They're, they're too busy. Super smacking that in bugs the front. out of their butt. Fucking quit smacking <laughs> bugs up your butt. They're boring of them. You know those test tubes you buy for the ant farms? Yeah, they're sliding. they're just shoving. They're boofing that. <laughs> they're pouring vodka in. And then, oh man. I but can see that. Back to the forest. Well, it's Where obviously a forest. It's not in a desert. Whatever it is. So we're in a forest. With a bear. Or or a Or guy. a man. We both spawn in. We're both women like, I, I'm just not persuaded in the realm of thought that the bear, the bear would instantly attack me. No, it wouldn't instantly attack you. But my whole argument I was making to myself, because I didn't want to participate in the conversation. My coworker was doing it, and I was like, there's literally nothing I can say here on either side that's going to make any difference. And, or They're just going to hate you. They're going to hate me no matter what I say. So uh, for this specific thing, for the first time in my life, I did just sit and listen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm glad I did, because I think my argument would be, what percentage of bears maul things to death? And it's like 100%. If and they wanted to. If they want, not just at some point in their life, mauled something to death. Well, that's not true. Not all bears eat things. Like, bear, some bears are, are vegan or whatever. Really? Yes, they eat bears. Their muscles literally have, like, blueberry juice in them because mm, oh, they, yeah. eat, they eat so much fruit. But Joe Rogan said that, remember? I do remember that. He said it was the remember? blueberry bear meat is probably the best meat you'll ever taste in your life. Yep, I remember. Yes. I, I, I read that Steve somewhere. I read that somewhere. <laughs> I read that. <laughs> well, dude, I was reading, so I was reading this I was reading document. this, like, encyclopedia, as yeah. I always do. It was, like, 5,000 pages long encyclopedia, and this one just so happened to be about bears. There couldn't be... I've recently broken that character trait of myself within the last year or two of, like, if I heard it on a podcast, not saying I read it somewhere. I like, know. I used to I used to do that by just... I think it's pure embarrassment and, like, pride. You know what sucks about that for me is sometimes I would read it just because I was reading a lot. Yeah. But I was also listening to so many podcasts that I would forget. just... I would... And I wouldn't forget. I'd, I would do what you were doing. But I would justify it to myself. I was like, well, I do read. I could have read it. I could have read. I read something else today. Yeah, I've been reading a lot recently. I've been reading the Bible like every day, actually. Pretty cool stuff. Dude, I'm all out on the Old Testament. I mean, I mean that's not nothing new. Yeah. But I, I think it's like even bad to say shit from the Old Testament. Like I, You shouldn't even be talking about it. 
I think there's a few books in there that are relevant just because Jesus like piggybacks off of them in the New Testament. I like, mean, I'm not saying there's not facts in some of the stories, like I said, but some of the stories are literally like... Dude, Numbers is the worst book in the Bible by far. I stand by that for sure. Why? What happens in there? Uh, He... His babies are these people, and they had these babies, and this baby had that baby. Oh, it's literally an entire yeah. book of begotten. Like, it's just... That book is hard as fuck to read. It's... I don't... Think... It's... You have to fully annotate a notebook. Like, you have to write down graphs it, and shit. It would make sense if every time you read a name, you went back to the book of numbers and then found the name and then, like, whoop? Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know what your gonna, answer is going to be every time? Oh, yeah, okay, I guess they are from God. <laughs> It'd be funny to have a web on your wall with, like, red string. I would actually love to do that from number. Just fuck it. Why not? My whole apartment's open. Yeah. Just have, like, print out uh, pictures. Samuel. Where is Samuel? Okay. Okay. How does the Rothschilds fit into this? <laughs> yeah, they're, like, on a separate web. Dude, have you seen the podcast of Andrew not Santino? Um... Andrew Sullivan. What the fuck's that guy's name? Andrew Schultz. Oh. <laughs> um, with who? With the black guy. Probably Much, not. Most recently, it was he was talking about like I very rarely watch his show. Have you ever heard of like the Twelfth Planet book? Oh yeah, no, I know exactly what this dude's face looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came in and started truth in. He started truth bombing about everything. Was it worth watching? Was it cool? Yeah, he was talking about how the Old Testament was actually about two Sumerian gods that were both um, controlling their people. Like, it talks, like in the Bible, it talks about how he's a jealous god in the Old Testament. Yeah, I remember. And But when you say, like, his name is, like, when you end your prayer with, with Amen, you're calling him. Like, that's his name. Is Amen. Is amen. Interesting. And that's why it, that's like Old Testament stuff and that's Catholic stuff. Well, Jesus, like there's a ton of stuff in the New Testament where they end with amen, amen. That's just Jesus too? I don't know. I can't, I don't know if Jesus does Because it, they could have just been, because it, it, it was all, you were Jewish until, you know, Christ happened. Mm. So it's like they're just reading all that Jewish shit. You know, maybe they're like, fuck, yeah, I don't know, God is God. But also, it exp he explains, like, what Yahweh means. Because there's Yahweh, and then there's... Uh, Yehoah, Yahshua. Yeah, exactly. And he says those are the two gods that the Old Testament are, is about. And bo they're both Sumerians, which mm -hmm. is the race that enslaves humans to get gold and... Interesting. So you're in there praying to the wrong dude. So there, that's why it's like you got to get out of that Old Testament. And he that actually makes perfect sense because of the Temple of Solomon. Mm -hmm. The whole. If you ever read the book, where, I don't know which book it is, but I think it might be two books where they talk about the construction of the Temple of Solomon, and they just go into great detail about how the book, the temple is constructed. Mm. It's all gold. Yeah, wow. It's like all gold, and it's exactly tells you exactly how many cubits of gold it is for this. Wow, event. that's crazy. Like. Down to, it's all gold. Like, the whole thing is gold. It's mm -hmm. got lions with wings on it. And it's like, imagine the, the, uh... The base? <sighs> no, the thing they carried around, the the Ark. Imagine the Ark oh, of the yeah, Covenant, yeah, yeah. but, like, a building. Well, he says the Ark was uh, how they powered everything. Yep, yep, I've heard that a lot of and times. They talk about that in Ancient Aliens, too. And he says that if, um... Like, they describe the clothes you had to wear when handling the Ark. Cotton and stuff. But he says it was, like, lead and rubber boots and rubber gloves. Hmm, like grounding material. Exactly. And he says that if you don't wear that, it says that you would die because exactly. God would strike you down. But that doesn't happen. You get electrocuted. Like, they just explained it as God strikes you down. Because they don't know. It's just... It's just like a power reactor going off or something. But somebody built the ark. Like I think, like most. Well, he says there. He says there's four or five arcs, and that it's lost technology now, mm. and that it used to be in the pyramid. Be in the pyramid. And I can that, get there, dude. I can easily in my mind get there. I love getting there. Actually. And he was saying that the pyramid wasn't just to power stuff. But that it was sending messages out into the universe. Oh, like radio waves, but like stronger, like but different, faster. like uh, 
he explained it like uh, it might have had something to do with carbon. Like he, he, they were vibrating carbon out there, and it was just kind of saying to the other universes, like, "Hey, we're carbon here. Is there any other like, yeah, like we're vibing out the carbon here? Yeah, like who else is a carbon? Like I don't that? know if it was carbon exactly. That might be a misrepresentation, but it was something. They were transmitting some kind of frequency out. Because they were vibrating in the vibing, they were vibrating in the pyramids, and they were shooting it out. Yeah, I he explains it much better. But for some reason, they were doing that. And they ask him, like, does does he think that Christ is gonna come back and save everybody? What would he say? He said he doesn't know that if some guy, he doesn't believe that some guy is gonna come down on a cloud one day and everybody's gonna see him and he's gonna be like, come with me. He says he believes once humanity wakes up and realizes that we're all... Once everybody starts loving each other... Yeah, that's going to be Christ. And they all... Like, you all realize you're on the same consciousness. Yeah. And you open up all to to one another. And once that happens, that's Christ coming back. Dude, that... I'm so... That is beautiful. Because that is actually what I believed before you said that. Mm -hmm. Where it's like Christ coming back is not through uh, a person, but through the word. Mm-hmm. And through like, cause I had this crazy realization the other day where I, I started crying like a baby cause I'm gay, mm-hmm. but it was like, I've spent so much time in the last three or four years reading all these different spiritual texts and like starting to like try to piece things together and then finding all of these overlapping truths mm-hmm. that I thought were really interesting. One, the, the main truth that made me start like, like kind of s- snowballing was you find it in the uh, emerald tablets. You find mm-hmm. it in the um, hermeti- corpus for medicine. And that is also what else that guy talks about. Like, he spends three and a half hours just talking about what I just said, but in depth. Like, yeah, pretty much he only said what I just said, but more thorough and more well explained and, like, actually yeah. where it connects the dots with other texts. But Well, yeah, you know. dude, it's like corpus hermeticum, uh, emerald tablets, and even inside of Buddhist texts, but uh, inside of the Bible... And I haven't read uh, anything like the Bhagavad Gita or anything like yeah, that is uh, the Quran. Dude. I haven't read those, but if I did, I feel like you would find it as well. Uh, maybe not in the Quran, but because it's so direct. But I haven't read it, so I don't know. But the I'm sure I, from what I hear, as a good news bringer, as the new, as the New Testament enjoyer, I heard good things from the Quran. Okay, but I well, haven't read perfect. it. I haven't read it. No, I'm not saying there's bad things in it, but what I'm about to say is I wonder Dude, if Dude, wait. Is... That reminds me. I'm, I'm going to try and find this video for you. I found a video on TikTok. It was like, uh, yeah, this is my... F- I read the Quran in one day... <laughs> It was like some gay white dude who was pretending to be like a conservative Christian white dude. You absolutely could not read the Quran in a day. I read it in one day. It took me eight hours. I thought, I don't know what I thought. I thought this book was going to be filled with like terrorism. I don't know. But it was actually really nice and full of love. And I was like, that is the most insanely racist thing to ever post on the internet. I thought they were going to be like putting, teaching you how to put bombs in your shoes. (laughs) Dude, it's literally... It was literally like some bit or yeah. something. So How are you supposed to cut their head off correctly? Yeah, well. <laughs> How to behead infidels wasn't in there. Yeah, of course not. But so, uh, no, but the thing that I noticed and started to put together, and it was when I read, uh, was reading the New Testament, mm-hmm. uh, is that Jesus speaks in parables, right? Like that's, uh, and I forget, it's either John 10 or Matt, I think it's Matthew 13, chapter 13. Uh, it's like the his disciples are like, why do you speak to these people in parables? And he's he goes because uh, you can lead. Like uh, my job is to get them to see the gate, mm. basically. And then the, uh, then then John ten, it's talking about the he's how Jesus is the shepherd and we're sheep, and how the gate is uh, to go through him is to go through the gate. But if you go over the fence rather than through the gate, you're doing evil. So like to get to get to the conclusion of this, you are doing everybody, including yourself, a complete disservice because you're missing the actual point of Mm -hmm. why you're supposed to be doing going through Jesus, which is through community service and through like loving people Mm -hmm. rather than just like snorting DMT powder or something. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you break through and you go, whoa. No, but he speaks in parables, and then also it's uh, the Emerald Tablets is in parable, like talks about keeping things hidden within symbols. Mm-hmm. Uh, so does the Corpus Hermeticum, which are tied basically. Uh, but so does Buddhist text principles talks about keeping things uh, 
in in parables or symbols. And the reason for that, not so much with the Buddhist text, that's just to explain it better to people, but with specifically with Christianity and specifically with the, the uh, Emerald Tablets, was to keep this knowledge openly, blatantly available for everybody to read, but it, it is for those who are seeking it and not for those who are just existing. So, like, all of this knowledge Mm -hmm. is always around you wisdom not even knowledge wisdom is constantly around you at all times but it is not seen by those without ears and heard without or it's not seen (laughs) it's not seen by those without eyes and heard without with by those without ears it's only seen and heard by the people who are looking for it which is what jesus is talking about is those who have ears can hear and those with eyes can see and uh it clicked for me and i started crying because i was like dude i've been surrounded by this wisdom and i'm reading this true wisdom like the word literally Mm -hmm. and it's found everywhere inside of everything and i've been sitting here reading it going okay now how am i supposed to take this and do something with it and then i just like i had this realization where i was like this is the word like this is god like i'm talking with god right now and it's like obvious and i was so it was so obvious to me that i started i was so upset because i was like i've been spending so much time looking for this thing that's been right in front of me and i haven't noticed it because i'm too busy thinking about like how i can shove bugs up my butt or something dude like <laughs> you're, like, you're like i need a job yeah i'm like i'm literally like how can this help me get paid or something you know what i mean like yeah. how am i supposed to get paid through this <laughs> but it's like it came i came to that realization i was like oh it totally makes sense why you would have it everything guarded by symbolism and guarded by parable because you don't want to have something that's out in the open for anybody to just be like yeah that's common knowledge that of x because one it loses a lot of credibility mm-hmm. even though it's paradoxical because although it loses credibility in the whole it's not actually losing any credibility at all but the issue is when you have a piece of information that is widespread on like a viral scale it makes it become cringe to people like me, people like me. Like, I'll give you an example. This is something I've been hearing a lot within the last couple of months, and I swear I've probably heard a hundred different people say it to me in person rather than just online too. And it's, did you know if you eat local honey, it'll actually curb your allergy symptoms? I hear that nonstop, that is insane. right? And and I heard, <laughs> I kept hearing it, and, and at first I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then I heard it twice, and I went, okay. And I heard it ten times, and I went, that's just not true. <laughs> and then I looked it up, and it's not true. And oh then you get everybody going, living, literally living their life, telling people a lie, going, did you know this? <laughs> And then it's, like, another person who also heard that by just some stranger on the internet goes, yeah, obviously I heard that. You didn't know that already? I heard about that 10 months ago. And then it creates this thing where people are telling each other fake knowledge that's complete lies, and they're going, oh, you didn't know? You didn't already know that? (laughs) Dude, I knew about that way long ago. And it becomes, like, you become pretentious. And then if you start doing that with things like the Bible or things where it's, like, if there, if it weren't guarded by parable and guarded by symbolism, people would just go, oh, obviously you have to be good. Oh, duh. <laughs> what, you weren't already being good? <laughs> and then somebody else is going to go, no, I actually was already being good. And then everybody's just going to be a retard. But here's the problem. Is that people are bad. That's why you can't choose the right. man in the bear. Right. I I hear what you're saying. <laughs> you- I hear exactly. What That's you're why you can't choose the man in the bear scenario because they're not very Christ-like. Yeah, but the women aren't either. Like the whole thing, like all people are bad. You can't I be agree. good. You cannot be good because God is is good all the time. When is God good? All the time. I'm a sexy boy. <laughs> sexy boy. No, but I did think that was really interesting. Like, hold just on, the... let me uh, find this book I was just listening to the other day. It was okay. I'm uh, fifty fifty on it because I was listening to it at work. Oh, anybody, any work fans out there? <laughs> Dude, I love the idea. I because I've done it so many times in my life, like so many times in my life, where I just learned something new and then I sit on it for like thirty minutes and I go, "Oh man, I've known this my whole life," and then I go and tell somebody like. Dude, I, I did you know that? And they're like, no. And I'm like, oh, really, dude? Oh, you fucking retarded! <laughs> no, really, tell me. You really didn't know. I was listening to the Joe Rogan classic. 
the sacred mushroom and the cross. Oh, I have to listen to that or read it. I'm not gonna listen. Read that. I'm gonna I listen was... to it. I don't know. I'm not very convinced because it's the whole story. It's like the whole book is like Christ means. It's like the whole point is that Christ just means the seed of God. And that it's literally just the plants growing through the crop season. And it's like, it, it, because Christianity was, it says Christianity goes back thousands of years before Christ was even around. And that all of these words meant different things in their languages. But then once their text got translated into the Greek stuff, it was lining up with other Christianity things. Like, like, he says there's no Christ and that it's all just talking about mushrooms. Like, okay, so. Like, but it, his whole point, it's all through just text and, like, yeah. language. He, there's a great point to be brought up there, which is that if you take a language and you translate it to one language and then you take it from that language and translate it to another language, you're going to have a different word. Like, mm-hmm. and it's going to have a different meaning. That is true. That's totally true. Yeah. Which is why the Quran rules. But. Yeah, because it's like, this it's, is this is how it was written. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's the same language. Mm-hmm. But the, the problem is that it, what you're telling me sounds exactly like what I was just saying is somebody's trying to go over the fence rather than through the gate. Like, they're, they're just trying to be like, actually, it's a much easier solution than you could possibly think. You think the burning bush is... You think the burning bush is God? <laughs> it's literally drugs. <laughs> Dude, you've ever done drugs before? I can tell you it's exactly like drugs. Have you ever had a spiritual experience that was a mimic drugs? <laughs> no. Oh, wh- don't you think we would have had one by now? No, you are a sinner. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, you can't break through, dude. That's the whole point. But- and then the, people want so badly to be, and I find myself doing this, but people want so badly to be the answer that yeah. they're missing the point that they are not the shepherd. Yeah, it's like everybody's trying to be the shepherd. Well, I find my, like, dude, it, it's totally natural to want to be like Jesus. Obviously, you want to be like Jesus. Who doesn't want to be like Jesus? I started laughing, thinking about, that. like, who doesn't want to be like Jesus? <laughs> Obviously. Oh, well, that reminds me. I was, uh, my girlfriend, there's season two of Milf Manor. My girlfriend makes me watch Milf Manor. That sounds she, fun. She loves turning me on. And, uh, Milf, Man- Milf Manor. And then, uh, Fuck, I completely forgot Season the point two, uh, of what were we just saying? Uh, everybody wants to be like Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one girl was like, what do I want in a man? Mm, somebody who's good looking and good and bad. And I'm like, what's the point of saying that? That's what everybody wants. No, I want somebody who sucks ass that bad and can't satisfy me in any way at all. I'm looking for somebody who takes a test tube, cracks it open on the bottom half, smears some peanut butter on it, and shoves the other part up their butt so the bugs eat the peanut butter and climb up the booty hole. <laughs> bugs in the booty. Uh, no, really. That, like, I mean, if it's like, like you said, like, who doesn't want to be, like, who doesn't want, like, it's like so unoriginal. Like, say something. That's what, well, I'll, I will give that book a listen just because everybody's, like, or not every, <laughs> just because I read it somewhere that <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> but, but, no, it's yeah. also, like, he refers to it as a cult, like, Christianity as a whole as a cult and stuff like that, because it's, uh, it's, like, it's, like, a weird perspective. That's why I said I'm 50-50 and I'm not really convinced by it, because it's just, like, like, how does he know that's what they meant by their words? Because he's right. Christ, dude. He's I'm telling you, he's got ants in his pants, and he's going like this. <laughs> I've got going, ants in my pants. This is the name of the episode. It's, he's, he, ants in my pants. He so desperately wants to be the man. Yeah. And same with uh, Graham Hancock. That's why he turns me off so much now, is because he so desperately wants credit. Like Does he? I mean, I was watching that thing, the podcast at 45 minutes in. I was just bored. Like, they weren't talking about cool stuff. They're like... It gets a little cooler at some points, and then it gets insanely gay in the middle, and then at the end, it gets cooler again. I gotta watch. I gotta full. I gotta fucking listen to that all the way. <laughs> the, the presentation... You gotta listen to that black dude talk. I'm, I'll, I'll do it. I'm probably gonna re-listen to it. I like, th- <clears throat> it is one of the first times my girlfriend's talking to me, and I'm watching this, and I was like... I didn't even say anything. I was just like... 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, don't you see me listening to this black guy? Oh, dude. That you just reminded me. I, so I found a podcast yesterday through War Mode that I was li- am listening to currently that's like six hours long and split into two different podcasts. It's between Rick Rubin, <laughs> this guy, uh, I think it's Jack Cruz is his name. I think his name is Jack. His last name is Cruz for sure. And then Andrew Huberman. And it's this dude taking uh, Jack Cruz, talking to Andrew Huberman in front of Rick Rubin and going, dude. You're a smart guy, and you've got this big audience, but you're actually totally wrong on everything that you're talking about. And here, let me tell you why. And every time Andrew Huberman's would try to talk, he would go, ah, 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 listen. And it's funny because, like, dude, everybody just jerks his dick, Mr. Huberman's. They they go, oh, oh. And he's not oh. even a doctor. Do they call him out for that? Uh, they call him Dr. Huberman. He's not a doctor. They did not call him out for that. But, no, it's just them. He was, But the stuff they were talking about was, like, the blue light stuff and this and that. And they got really deep into the blue light things. Well, dude, I'm about to start wearing... Because of this, you're never going to see me without rose-colored glasses on for the rest of forever. Why? Or not rose-colored, but like anti-blue light blocking glasses. Is is that really a big deal? Super big deal, apparently. Really? It's the biggest way that your body takes in like electromagnetic uh, negative rays. Really? Your eyes are the most sensitive part of your body to UV and then also the negative stuff from blue light. That is crazy. I actually should. I thought it was a scam. No, it's like apparently the biggest issue right now. Like, I so guess if I you take an EMF reader and uh-huh. you put it in a room, like with all of this equipment, it'll go off to like a insane. It, we're like in a microwave right now, apparently. In what, our eyes. In, in, not because only, yeah. they're the most susceptible to it. And our second most susceptible part of our body is our skin. So. Oh, good thing I'm always covered up. But then also inversely. By staying inside and not getting the sun on you, you're like not healing yourself. Like the he was, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the okay. sun is good for you, and like you, he was also well, I'm saying golfing that, all the time. He was saying something too about like you shouldn't really even wear sunglasses unless you really have to because you want to be able to like in like not stare at the sun, but yeah, like yeah. you want to be able to get that stuff in your eyes. And by wearing sunglasses, you're kind of blocking that. I wonder how bad contacts are blocking it. He actually talks about that as well and says, if you have bad eyes, you should wear glasses and not wear contacts. Because if you're wearing contacts, you're blocking that stuff too. And you're supposed to, if you're going to wear glasses, wear them like this. And every time you need to see, go like this. And then go like that. Okay, but here's what. So if I'm at work, contacts with UV lights, good. Or with the blocking blue light. It should be. I mean, it's, and it's then more if effective. I, yeah. And then if I leave work and go golfing, take my contacts out, take my glasses, take yep. my glasses out. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And so I need to spend 10 bucks on Amazon and get these blue light. Yeah. I'll send you the link to the show because it's, it's, the thing is, it's really complicated. Like, it's kind of hard for me to, they're using a lot of like. So it's a doctor, this cruise guy? or Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. a, he was a spinal surgeon and now he's a, a physicist, I guess now. Like, a, not even a doctor, like, medical doctor. Dude, no. my back feels so much better this year than it did last year. Like, I went golfing th- this three times this week. Yeah. I feel good today. Like That's good. My brother just pulled his back, <laughs> like, <laughs> bad. That's not good. Where, where did he pull it? Uh, like, low? Low. He was not doing... Good. He was doing... Uh, That's like my bicep. worst He was using uh, ropes to do hammer curls at the gym. Okay. And he arched his back a little while he did one, and it, he just said he felt it go, like... <laughs> Like sp- like out like this mm-hmm. on his lat, and he oh just, yeah on his lat, and he went oh. <laughs> That's kind of what happened to me when in my back. I was doing the front squat, and I leaned forward a tiny bit. Yeah, and it was like, you know how your trap, you know, you know your trap goes all the way down to like here. Yeah, that's where I felt it go like. Oh no! So that's why my trap I think is so locked up. But dude, I, I'm moving around better. Dude, I'm swinging the ball. Your th- Dude, they never even called me, bro. I know. I don't know why. I thought they It's because me. you don't fucking golf. Oh, How whatever. many times do I tell you that you need to go to Goodwill, spend 12 bucks on a set of clubs, yeah. and go whack the balls around? I got balls for you. That, that's 17 true. bucks. That's true. That's true. 30 bucks, you got a four-hour excursion. Uh, That's true. I should do it. I'm trying to also remember. Oh, the, he was saying other stuff about, like, your body actually radiates light without you realizing it. Like, your bones, I guess, not like... My light must be very dim. <laughs> like they, they radiate... It's like a non-visible light. And he was also going into... So the reason, I guess, he's now transitioned and being a physicist, you, you gotta listen to it. It's, like, really 
I will provocative. Um, she thinks I'm cute. <laughs> but so he I was saying sexy. like, uh, which was something I was writing about in that paper before I stopped writing it because I got too confused with myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're hearing stuff, you're hearing light, which is something that I was kind of inkling going towards. Like everything is on a vibrational frequency, mm-hmm. which is what he was up on saying. Light is like the ultimate vibrational frequency. Uh, oh, sound okay. is like a lower form of light. But it's still just vibrations. Yeah, it's vibrations. But vibrations that it's like at its core is light. Or, something or is like it that. light is vibration? Vibra- vi- vibration is the core of it all, right? Yeah, that's but what like, I thought. But like light is like... You just said light was the core of it all. You're right. The, but the, he did say we were hearing light. Like that's what he said. But I think what he meant by that is just like vibrations and technically. But then in that case, we're also hearing bugs in our butt because <laughs> bugs are just vibrations in our butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that. But you know, it, it's very interesting. I'm not doing it a very. And this guy, the black guy, also said that. Well, I'm just kind of spoiling the whole podcast at this point. I'll listen to it still. But he said that he was visited by aliens. Of couple years like not that long ago like five years ago everybody's been saying that dude and dimensional beings but he says he was just sitting in his living room like with his family at home and then it went like (laughs) like all the lights yeah and then it went like dark and then there was just two grays like tall grays with the eyes and the small slits that would really freak me out if they were taller than me and he said it kind of looked like they were wearing a mask, almost, like a high tech face. Like it was almost like a high tech face covering because it looked like silly, like they didn't move their emotion, like emotionless. Yeah. And that they were just looking at him, and his head started vibrating, like his mind. Mm. And he felt like his brain vibrating in his head, and he screamed, but he didn't hear the scream. Like he felt. It leaving his mouth, and, th- and then he said that they just phased through the wall and left, and that everything went back on, and that he went and like checked on his family and shit, and they like they they said they didn't hear anything, and they were like you crazy man, and they divorced him and left him, and that he said that like one of his kids doesn't even talk to him anymore since that happened, because he thinks he's like crazy or something. I don't know. Mm. That's but, interesting. I believe that. I mean, there, dude. There's definitely. An and he says beings. that he says he never drinks, smokes, does any drugs or anything, because he says he's got a really good memory and like the way he puts stuff in his head is like a filing cabinet, cabinet, so he can recall stuff very well. Interesting. And he says that he doesn't want to. He knows that when you do drugs or something, it can rewire your brain in some way, mm. and he doesn't want to lose that. Oh, I don't want to. Dude, I wish I had the ability to do Do you think I have the ability to do that? Or do you think that's something that, like, you have to start with? Like, do you think my software is, like, already where it's at? I think that you have 40 years left, at least, of cognitive ability. You can probably be pretty damn good at whatever you wanted to. Like, I think if you close your eyes and try to imagine a chessboard, and then you could, like... You know how people memorize chess boards, obviously. Yeah. And they know every color of every single square and everywhere it is and everything. You could do that, but then, okay, and then in your head you go, okay, in A1, this is where these memories are. And B2, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, and now A row will be all of these. Like, it's just an example of how you could practice partitioning information in your mind. You go, come on, Ugg. Why'd you you didn't go see that, man? You didn't go see the grave. <laughs> what? Come on, Ugg. You got ants in your pants. You ain't seen <laughs> nothing. Come on, Ugg. You ain't you ain't saw no damn aliens out. You yeah, crazy. I'll, I'll listen to it. I just dude, Andrew Schultz and his bros They're gays. But they're pretty hard to they're pretty tough to swallow. They were I he they just Pause. shut up and let him talk. They just shut up. They were like Listen, I'm not going to fact check anything you say. Just fucking tell us how it is, and we're going to agree with you. Mm. And I like that. But I agree. They can be a little much sometimes. But Yeah. 
But yeah, no, dude. Also, the thing about this podcast with Rick Rubin and this dude and Huberman's is it came out a year ago and it has like fifty thousand views on YouTube. And oh, really? Apparently, it's being suppressed. Like, apparently, it has a shit ton of views, mm. but it's like being suppressed somehow because I, I never heard of it. I didn't even know Rick Rubin had a podcast. Me neither. But uh, I'll send it to you. It's pretty badass. It's pretty cool. It's very hard to like digest because they're talking about a lot of like these receptors of your specific part of your eye, blah, 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 blah. And then you got to, like, the way I'm picturing is, like, okay, I guess there's a ring around inside of your eye that's, like, in between the color and mm-hmm. the pupil, and that part is, like, extremely important for sucking up UV energy. And, like, I guess it'll really heal you. And th- also, so I guess by being outside and yeah. getting a bunch of rays all the time, you're creating stem cells inside of your body. And then it's... So I just need more sun in my life. More sun and... Uh, all, I'm not. I'm only like a wh- quarter of the way through this podcast, so they might flip it on me and be like, "We got you." Actually, I also <laughs> think everybody should be taking creatine, dude. My body reacts so good to it, dude. I've been taking it. I think that's why it. my back feels so much better. Like my muscle is just recovering so much faster. The most shredded dude I know in the world doesn't take any other supplement at all, other than creatine, and he's cooked in a good way. Oh, uh, yeah. In real life? He's raw. Yeah, I know him in real life. That's what I thought you meant. He is probably one of the most shredded people in the area, though. Like, in the state. I doubt it. I mean, body fat percentage-wise, maybe not. He's probably got, like, a 13 or a 12% body <laughs> fat. But he's got, like, turtle shell abs. Like, crazy jacked. Big, giant vein on the bicep. Yeah, but I want to see the veins on your abs. No vein on the abs. He's not that cut. I want to see the vein... I that is a nice this vein. This vein right here is a sick vein to have. Or if you're really shredded, you'll see like a couple little baby veins right in the yep. middle. That's a crazy one to have. I, I'm, I'm I'm almost there. Me too. Me too. No, no. I've been good lately though because I can't taste very much because I have really bad seasonal allergies this year, and I think it's because I got the jab. It was, dude. Last year was the first year I had seasonal allergies. This year I have them horribly bad, and I think the year before that I got the jab. No. What jab? The seasonal allergy? No, dude. The vax. No, wait. When was the vax? Four years ago or oh, something. Oh, no. Then it can't be that. When did you... You got vax? I had to, dude. I had to get the first one. Oh, my God. They made me. I gotta go. Did they? Wait, ma- who did you do that for? School. Oh, my God. Who so did gay. I do it for? <laughs> I did it for the man. <laughs> you did it for the guy you owe $100,000 to. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> well, honestly, I didn't... I guess I didn't have to do it in... Retrospect, I I thought I had to do it, but I don't. I didn't have to. I could have just taken a COVID test every day. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, you're gonna die. <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> I know, dude. I've got the mark. <clears throat> oh man. I know, dude. The jab got me, bro. It's hilarious. I know. It is hilarious. So did Andy. You guys are fucked. I'm fucked. I'm really trying to undo it though with this sunlight therapy, reading the Bible and doing sunlight therapy. I'm going to do sunlight therapy and do my new... Uh, red light mask. Yeah, my new red light you mask. You got That looks crazy. It looks no, like a you're going to give mask. me it. No, it's not red light, that one. The one I'm talking about is just a massage mask. What? It's not red light. I thought it was red light, but just no it. blue light. No, it's just a freaking... Uh, uh, I guess I got to put it... with a massage. I got to pay thirty nine ninety nine a month for the next four or five months and for the oh. full face one. Do you think that... What do you? What is that supposed to do for you? I guess the same shit I'm talking about. It's LED red and then infrared lights. I think when you do red and infrared, it's something with your skin. And then the blue, like, tightens it up. Like, one's for wrinkles and then one's for acne. I don't know. Dude, they were saying crazy stuff about the Apple Air Vision Pros, too. Why? They were just saying people, like, they're gonna they're thinking of discontinuing them because they're, people are spat. Oh, they're nuking their face or yeah, what? yeah. Same with, like, all VR headsets in general are getting, like, nuking people's eyeballs. Because it's, like, not only are you taking in blue light, like, insane amounts of blue light, but you're taking it, like, right here. And so it's, like, you're you're not missing a spot. And your eyes are just getting fucked. And I guess what's causing, like, it's not just your eye. The same way how you take vitamin D in through the sun, right? I, imagine you're, like, I don't, this is a... Taking vitamin Z. You're taking vitamin cancer, right? Yeah. Straight into your eyeballs. And then, like... So all of the good stuff that vitamin D does for you and, like, you know, it makes it all the way through your body. Mm-hmm. You're doing the same thing where you're, like, producing some sort of, like, evil negative chemical through blue light. 
<clears throat> and then the, the question was like, well, why do they have blue light? Like, why do they do blue light? And it was, I guess, created by, like, I guess the blue light standard was kind of standardized by the the uh, the whatever, not the Rockefeller, whatever the people who did the public schooling, Rockefeller. Rothschild. Rothschild. One of those ones. They did, like, whoever invented public schooling in those systems are the same people who were, like, standardizing blue light screens. So there's screens that aren't <coughs> blue light emitting? I th- think that it's the way that we... It's kind of like test, like how we have, like, we have this type of energy that we use, and then there's also Tesla's type of energy. Mm. Like there's AC and DC. Yeah, 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 Kind of like something like that broke off where it was, like, it could have gone this way or that way. So pretty much this podcast is just you guys should go listen to these other two podcasts listen. that we really enjoyed that really went into depth. Into well, this detail. book I read. <laughs> you guys should go read this book I read. You guys should check out this book we read. Um, you guys won't be able to find it, though. Yeah. She's in Canada. It's 12 tablets, actually. <laughs> it's 12 tablets that are made of a, a green emerald-like material that is not specifically emerald and that... They do they wait the way that they go into depth about the emerald tablets about how they're what they look like they're mm-hmm. like bound with these gold alloy rings and he said actually Toth is the son of another Sumerian guy but that they want to help humans blast off Believe they it. they don't they don't want to enslave and like they don't get the kick out of enslaving humans and dude, if he's talking about though or toe, whatever though, there's so many different ways you could say it. Thoth, Thoth. Thoth there's so many different ways. I've heard a bunch of different scholars all say. I it thought totally Thoth different. was the most accurate. I say Thoth. I'd say, and then I've said Thoth. I've said but some people I say would Toth. Say, I would say, I think if I wanted most most people to know who I was talking about, yeah, I say Thoth. To Thoth. Well, that's like just how you would pronounce it if you were looking at it, like Thoth, 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 Thoth. Thothereth. Anyway, well, he's so, so he's, he's praising saying, Thoth in a good way. Well, he's just saying that he was saying Thoth is Moses and all that stuff too, and that. Well, it's pretty convincing if you read the Emerald Tablets that he would be like. And Moses. he was saying that all these stories of Moses are true but they're misrepresented because the landscape of the world Moses was walking through the Red Sea actually it, first of all it wasn't the Red Sea it was a different sea is what he says that's more in Iraq like because you know the Bible is supposed to be in Iraq the Garden of Eden is in Iraq etc cetera, etc cetera. but he was saying that the lake wasn't full of water when he was around it was dry and that's why he could part it or walk across it and that's supposed to be a hint of when the Bible was written or when the story of Moses is going on. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the way that they talk about it in the Emerald Tablets, they talk about he's got a staff, mm-hmm. and he'll get people to, like, freeze with his vibration and, like, not move and then, like, listen to his uh, thing through, like, uh, telepathy. Uh, telep- or, yeah, telepathy, and then, like, unfreeze them, and then they're like, we love you. Like, they say, basically, he said, we saved the barbarians, and then, like, they got in this space shuttle and flew to the top of this mountain while the flood happened, and then when they got out, there was these barbarians, and they tried to teach them. Mm. Fire. Yeah, it does talk about a staff. It talks about using the staff as, like, an That's an emerald tab- tablet? Emerald tablets, yeah. yeah. Great. It's also not that long, dude. I should listen to it twice you at could, work tomorrow. You can listen to it on YouTube. I've listened to the Emerald Tablets on YouTube probably six or seven times at this point. I got to do that in a week. Well, when you start the book, it goes, this is not something that must be read once, but hundreds of times or a <laughs> hundred of times to pick up. Because it is true. Every time I listen to it, I get a new piece of like, ooh. That's how most stuff in general is, though. It's hard to pick up. Every, even if it's just like a movie, like a yeah, two like, hour long like movie. Or like a book I read. <laughs> oh yeah, when are you gonna come to the Austin, Texas, man? Fucking life, you know. I'm not one to get very political here, but I'm about to be the most political <laughs> podcast you've listened to. <laughs> oh my god, it, he's done. He's fried. Who did his? I gotta check his most recent one. It, hopefully, uh, he uploaded a good one, or else I'm gonna fucking one of shit them on is him somebody here. that I recognize the name of. Ooh, uh, 
It's somebody really important. In Colin here. Quinn is that a guy. stand-up comic. Who? He's a he's a political guy. No, he's not. Yes, he is. I guarantee you, they're going to talk about politics within the first five minutes of that episode, and I haven't listened to it. Yet. Like, wait, first ten seconds here. Hello, Joe. Joe, that was fun last night. Let me just start by saying. Hang on, he's saying he loves. What the a fun time at the. Cl- yeah, wait. I'm skipping to five minutes. Well, did in. you know that Louis C.K. came into ceilings lower? I just become a stone cold killer. Wow. That's my dream. I got him working out. For shit. Yeah, I know. Okay, he's talking about making the fat guys work yeah, out. Yeah, every single podcast starts this fucking saying. Oh, I know. I'm fucking doing that. I'm taking Jake Ellis. I'm taking Ari, man. We're going to work out. Thank you summer. for working out with me today. You know, I've got all my buddies here working out. Did he you sounds know? so old now. Did he actually you, does sound old. Did you know that The Rock was here, man? Uh, he's actually a really cool guy. You are the second biggest guy I've ever had work out here because I had a rock work out here. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, he's so yeah, Dude, I used to love, I still love Joe Rogan. Rogan has a special place in my heart, but man, he is old, dude. I wish he would shut the fuck up and start playing golf, dude. He'll never play golf. He should. He'll he's good, he's, he's old, and he'll realize that his body can't be fucking swinging his legs at 100 miles an hour anymore. He's going to give that retarded shit up. He, he's either going to do golf or some retarded, like parabotery. Dude, uh, Dude, that video I sent you <laughs> I said so that to so many people. <laughs> so fucking insane. <laughs> ah! oh, 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 Siri, call 911. I like how he had to have He's a like call 911 like 10 times. It didn't work. Yeah, he was on the credit card thing. <laughs> he like panic, like, like, because he's like trying to open his phone. Yeah. And if you panic, it, it, it opens. Yeah, it opens the Apple Pay. And it opens then, Apple Pay, and he has like his credit card info in front of his GoPro. <laughs> Dude, then there's five. Siri, Siri. <laughs> Siri, Siri, five rings. Oh, it took oh. five rings for her to answer on nine one one, which is honestly insane. Dude. And then she answers. She goes, "I crashed my flying machine. Help! I'm in Arizona and I crashed my flying machine." I would have started laughing if I was the lady. <laughs> he totally didn't die too. Like I honestly, based off of watching it a couple times, he's probably okay. He's not okay. His lower body exploded. But I mean, he's not probably. He's probably not paralyzed. He's probably. I think he saw him moving his feet, legs. I think he broke all of his lower spinal cord. Okay, destroyed his hip and broke both of his femurs. Yeah. It was literally like oh. it was literally like if a giant, a twenty foot <laughs> tall stop. giant, no. Picked up somebody like from his parachute and slammed him into the ground. It It was literally like that. The wind just grabbed him. He should have been. He He was was scrolling. The wind goes, whoop! He goes, what the fuck? Boom! Wait, can we end the show listening to this guy scream? Yeah, yeah. Put it on. Oh wait, but before you put it on though, I saw a meteor on Friday. Really? Yeah, I was driving in my car late, like 9.30 p.m. And That's I saw... fucking late. I saw a uh, a, a teardrop-shaped, like, uh, shooting star thing, but it was huge, and it was, like, closer than a shooting star. And it and it, it was, like, only saw it for, like, two seconds, where it just appeared, and it went, like, and then disappeared. That's pretty cool. But it was, like, huge. It was big. It was really big. Where? Around here? Yeah, like, five, two minutes from here, three minutes from here. Wait, wait, skip to the one, like, the last one, where it's, like, he goes in. Uh, <laughs> go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Go back, I want to hear him crash one more time. I want to hear him crash. <laughs> Hold on. That's him crashing. Yeah. This is him crashing here. 48 miles an hour. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What a crazy sound to land on. How many times are you going to show this? It does it three, I think, times. Oh, my God. I'm skipping the head. Right. 
my flying machine. Ah, ah. Okay, where are you at? So do you know where you're at? Uh, I'm in Enchanted Hills. I'm in the desert. Oh. <laughs> I cra Help me! I crashed my flying machine! I'm in the Enchanted Hills in the desert! <laughs> She's like, this guy is high on meth! Oh my <laughs> god. Good. They're picturing showing up he's wearing like steampunk goggles. <laughs> Crash my flying machine in the Enchanted Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of the desert. Please help. <laughs> what a fucking loser. Oh, that is so funny. Oh my God. What a freak. Why would you do that to yourself? You hate your life and your family. You really set yourself up for failure. Oh she calls. He goes, God. oh, oh. And she goes, what's the problem? He goes, I have ants in my pants. <laughs> I got fucked in my booty. <laughs> I've crashed my flying machine. And there's ants all over me. <laughs> <laughs> there's ants. Ah! <laughs> there's ants all over me, please. Oh, what the fuck was I talking about? It was something related to that Rick Rubin podcast with the guy. Get more sunlight. Guys. Get more sunlight, obviously. Get more sunlight. Christ would be with you. Uh... It's Come obviously together. just mushrooms, dude. It's like, look, whatever. You, look, oh, no. the problem is with with the with it being true. Like, if if the case is that the Christ is king and that it's true that Jesus was a man who walked, which obviously it's true, mm -hmm. then it's not going to be as easy as you just take a freaking boomer and go to heaven, dude. That's the thing is that people want books like that. People want the reason the sacred mushroom of the cross does so well is because they're like, now I get to go to heaven because I ate the mushroom. Yeah, I ate the mushroom. I saw spinning shapes and colors, and I started crying because my dad raped me when I was a baby. I, <laughs> I get to go to heaven now. It's like, no, you have to be good or I try to, to be. I good. get to be filled. Yeah, like people want to be filled with God's light. But instead, they're just getting just get filled. filled with bugs and they're being. <laughs> no, they just get filled with bugs. I just want to get full of bugs. I eat the bugs. Pop. Shove the bugs up your butt and eat the bugs. I want to pop. I want to pop bugs on my booty hole. 